Honourable ministers here present, Professor Jibril Fal, Catherine Ford of um, GK Partners, members of the NSDG team, fellow Gambians and friends of the Gambia, thank you very much for joining us today. Before the President comes, ladies and gentlemen, I would ask everybody again to kindly switch their phones to silent, please. Thank you very much. And prepare for the national anthem. But before we do that, can we all give a round of applause for wonderful journalists who so, so that you. Can I kindly ask as well, ladies and gentlemen, when the President enters the room, please be upstanding and we will welcome you with the Gambia National Anthem. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And Generation Talk Show, these are the delegates. Yeah. Thank you, UDP Media. Is, um, Jare? Yeah. That's Jare Sane from UDP Media. You've got our colleagues all over the room. That's uh, Mr. Saidi Lee there. Basa Hill is at the back, right at the back. Yeah. Just right at the back. It's a room full, so you can tell there's a lot of change in the Gambia. So thank you. I mean, this kind of um, attendance is um, unbelievable. You can tell there's a lot of change in the Gambia. So I mean, I am so pleased to see this. Gambians have drawn in in big numbers to come and see the president, His, His Excellency, Mr. Adam Abaro, should be in here any time from now. And that's our party leader, Honorable Hussein Odabo. We're going to have a little word with him later, inshallah. And thank you for your patience. Yes, yes. Where's Anaji? I don't know. I would like to grab The President of the Republic of the Gambia, His Excellency Adama Baro, and the First Lady.
Society of the Republic of the Cambia. Thank you, UDP TV. Should be just quiz, yeah? I'm sorry, so I want to put you. As well. My uncle is. Who's your uncle? I like Athens Retailer.
Il y a des miracles. 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 Il y a des a des Kaitanda <laughs> Kuntelunakuntelunika. <laughs>
We are not expecting any fire drills, so here are the fire exit signs, you can see them. By the way, we have to do this for health and safety reasons, we have to do this. The program is, we would have a number of statements from members of the community, they can make statements or ask questions, it's just for two minutes. We would hear from two of our honorable ministers. In that time, we would have interventions, we have some audio visuals, we hope that we'll be able to show. And there would be a statement from the president at the end. But before we do that, can I please take this opportunity to welcome his Excellency, the High Commissioner of the Republic of the Gambia to the United Kingdom, Francis R. Blaine. <laughs> Mr. Blaine would make a statement to welcome us, but in the Gambian tradition, I would call on our religious leaders to open in prayers. I will start by calling Imam Saad to the podium. Imam Saad. Religion leaders, 
bam ñëwé wax nañu waxtaan nañu mom mu laaj lan moy suñu tawat bi waxoko waye mom mu né do sam ku bi na ko gambé ci ñepp lolu ñu ka wël kombé té ñun amna ci expérience ci pass li xewon nit ñi fi nekkon amon na jëmal yo xamné dañ daan soxla de commerce pour suñu affaire juma ji registration bi muy ko na am waye ci fa ñu rek ubil ñu bunta bon ñu ko ñaan mr mr bi yalla yalla gëna taxaw yalla yalla gëna taxaw lolu yépp indal ala shay fa inna ma yadullu ala husni a'malikum lolu rek lan la mo fi moy né e liñ doon ñaan moy ñu am gofono bo xamé wala am ñu am nguur bo xamé né ma sha allah dafa ñew né wan gambian wan nation ci alhamdullilah ñu ngi kërëm is excellence ak ñi nga xamé ñoko jafal ni foré ministre bi nga xamé tamit kiñ ñu taanal dal alhamdullilah ñoo wax kiñ ñu taanal dafa nekk ko xamé suñu la foka suñu la joggé té woni nako bon nak ñu ko ñaanal ya rasul allah may ko wéru sha allah comme la ko tan ñu ma mo suñu ñaan rek insha allah ñaanal gambia ñaan rew bi ñaanal bëpp doomi adama dik ñaar ya rasul allah moy alquran et oni astajib lakum te ñu nekk digënte bo xamé né digënte takusan ak timis comme ni ko yeb ali sallallahu alayhi wasallam ci bi ci ajuma nekk waxtu namu ñaan yalla waxtu bu nekk gis time ku mu nekk waxtu namu namu ñaan ndax lepp ñu fi ñaan rek yalla bi alaahu bismillah arrahim a'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin arrahmanir rahim maliki yawmiddin iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in ihdina siratal mustaqim siratal ladzina an'amta alayhim ghayri al-maghdubi alayhim waladdallin amin subhanakallahu wa bihamdika wa tabaraka ismuka wa ta'ala jadduk allahumma inni as'aluka bi anni ashhadu bi annaka anta allah la ilaha illa anta ahad as-samad alladhi lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakun lahu kufuwan ahad allahumma inna nas'aluka imanan kamila wa 'ilman nafi'an wa yaqinan sadiqan wa nas'aluka allahumma dawana jannatan min kulli balaya wa nas'aluka اللهم ربنا من عافيه ونسالك تمام العافيه ونسالك الشكر على عافيه ونسالك ان الناس يا رب العالمين اللهم احفظ بلادنا جاب يا رب العالمين اللهم يا رب من انا بلادنا جاب خير فسد خير يا الله ومن انا بلادنا جاب شر فر بلا خير يا رب العالمين اللهم انا نجلك في نهورهم ونعوذك من سرورهم اللهم انا نجلك في نهورهم ونعوذ بسرورهم يا رب العالمين يا حي يا قيوم يا حي يا قيوم يا حنان يا منان يا حنان يا منان يا بني السماوات يا نعم المولى يا نعم النصير يا من اذا اراد شيئا ان يقول له كن فيكون تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا انك انت التواب الرحيم واغفر لنا وارحمنا انك انت الغفور الرحيم وصل الله على حبيبنا وشفيعنا وقائلنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين امين Thank you very much Imam Sar. And I now call the Reverend Family Kolejai to lead us in prayer. nations we worship you. We give you thanks for today, the day you have made. We will continue to rejoice and be glad in it. We give you thanks for the Gambia, our homeland. Bless we pray our gathering today. Receive our thanks and praise for your wonderful deliverance of the Gambia. We prayed, we fasted, we trusted and Lord, you deliver the Gambia in a miraculous way. Amen. We raise our voices in thanks and praise to you. And we give you thanks for the Third Republic. We pray for our president, Mr. Adam Abarro, and all who rule with him. In all they do, may your name be glorified. Amen. Guide our nation in the ways of justice and peace. Amen. That all may enjoy the fruits of their labor. Amen. We pray for your blessing on the National Assembly and all the local councils. Amen. We pray for all the development plans. Amen. May they be rooted and grounded in you. May the Gambia be a safe place for all. Amen. May it be a place of welcome for all who come to the Gambia, even as many are flocking to the Gambia. 
pray, Lord, that you will bless the people of the Gambia. Oh, blessed are the people whose God is the Lord. May your name be praised forevermore. Amen. I'm the High Commissioner to the United Kingdom, Mr. Blaine, did serve here in the United Kingdom in the 70s and 80s, I think. He would then later become the Gambia's permanent representative to the United Nations in New York, before embarking on an illustrious career in the United Nations, serving as UNDP rep in Liberia. It is our honor and our pleasure to ask the High Commissioner to formally open proceedings. Mr. Blair. Your Excellency President Adam Abaro, Your Excellency the First Lady, Madam Fatima Tabar Abaro, the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, International Cooperation and Governance Abroad, Mr. Hussein Udago, the Honorable Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Mr. Abu Bakr the Honorable Minister of Trade, Regional Integration and Employment, Dr. Aisha Tutuli, the Minister of Tourism, and culture, Mr. Hamad A. K. Ba. Uh, the Honorable Secretary General and Head of the Civil Service, Mr. Hadi Hussein Hudrami. The Honorable Minister for Higher Education, Mr. Badala Juf. Other distinguished members of the Gambian delegation, Mr. Rob Dixon, Director for West Africa. In the, Commonwealth and foreign, in the Foreign and Commonwealth Office of the United Kingdom, the Venerable Imams, Pastors and Elders present here, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. <clears throat> on behalf of the entire Gambian community in the United Kingdom, on, on behalf of Mr. Gibril Fowl of the GK Partners, who did an admirable job in securing this venue, and the required paraphernalia. On my own behalf, and on behalf of the entire staff of the Gambia High Commission in London, I wish to say how delighted, excited, ecstatic, and overjoyed we all are. <laughs> to respectfully and graciously welcome to London and specifically to this August gathering, the President of the Republic of the Gambia, His Excellency Mr. Adam Abaro, and the First Lady, Her Excellency Madam Fatima Abaro. <laughs> we are particularly pleased to also welcome the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, International Cooperation, and Gambians Abroad, Mr. Usenu Numukuda Gabo. The Honorable Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Mr. Abu Bakr Tambelu. The Honorable Minister of Trade, Regional Integration and Employment, Dr. Aisha Tutuli. The Minister for Tourism and Culture, the Honorable Hamad M. K. Ba. The Honorable Secretary General and Head of the Civil Service, Mr. Habib Sehudran. <laughs> the Honorable Minister for Higher Education, Mr. Barada Juf. <laughs> and other distinguished members of the Gambian delegation. The visit to London of His Excellency President Adam Abaro is an occasion and honor 
and a privilege which all Gambians in the United Kingdom have eagerly been looking forward to. We are also equally delighted and proud of the fact that after spearheading the fast track readmission of the Gambia in the Commonwealth of Nations, President Barrow comes to London to attend the just concluded Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting where he effectively represented the Gambia and made substantive and valuable contributions to the deliberations of the executive session of the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, which was highly appreciated. <laughs> Under President Barrow's able and dynamic leadership, democracy, good governance, the rule of law, respect for human rights, the independence of the judiciary, the independence of the Electoral Commission, the independence of key institutions involved in economic governance have all been fully restored, and the work of the, and the, work of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission has begun its earnest, including the elaboration of the attendant legal framework. <clears throat> there is freedom of, of the press, freedom of expression and association without being arrested, imprisoned or killed, mm -hmm. and the fundamental right of full participation by all Gambians in economic, social and political activities is now restored in a new Gambia which all Gambians are enjoying, not to mention, not to mention the fact that there is a great sense of optimism among the population. Conscious efforts are being made to accelerate gender equality and the empowerment of women, including their economic, social and political status. And youth employment is now a key multi-sectoral priority of President Barra's government. Furthermore, the relations with Senegal have been significantly improved and strengthened compared to the confrontational and tense situation that existed during the previous regime. The construction of the trans Bridge has already made appreciable progress. In the context of economic development, the primary focus of President Bada's government is the equitable distribution of the benefits of economic growth throughout the country with special emphasis on improving the quality of life of the rural poor. Mm -hmm. Special focus is also being given to the diversification of the agricultural sector, including efforts to achieve self-sufficiency in rice. <coughs> Concerted efforts are also being made to improve the quality of education at all levels. Quite apart from the strong and extensive support given by President Barrow, to the facilities and opportunities provided by the University of the Gambia, the new government is going to extraordinary lengths to obtain scholarships from various sources to enable young Gambians to undertake academic studies overseas in various disciplines, including agriculture, medicine, engineering, accountancy, economics, mathematics, biochem, mm -hmm. and science and technology. Mm -hmm. As part of the effort, you know, to, pro to promote private sector, private sector initiatives and generate employment, particularly for women and the youth. President Barra's government is giving strong support to the diversified and enhanced growth of small and medium enterprises, and confidence-building measures are already in place designed to attract foreign direct investment. Tourism is currently the Gambia's highest foreign exchange arm and a major source of employment. And an action-oriented strategy is currently being implemented to make the Gambia a favorite tourist destination that will significantly increase the number of tourists coming to the smiling coast. Today, there is general agreement in the Gambia that President Barrow is a good leader and a great president.
to the Gambian diaspora in the United Kingdom and else, no, to the Gambian diaspora in the United Kingdom and elsewhere in Europe, I respectfully say to you that those of you in a position to do so have a unique opportunity today to make a firm and irrevocable commitment to contribute your own quota either individually or in partnership with the British or other European nationals to the economic, social and infrastructural development of your motherland, the Gambia. You yes. might need to say, Banco Bingo. <laughs> let, me, let me say in conclusion, Mr. President, that the Gambian diaspora in the United Kingdom are here today, not only to heartily welcome Your Excellency and the First Lady to the United Kingdom and to celebrate this occasion, their presence here is a vivid, clear, and tangible manifestation of their love and unflinching support for Your Excellency. And they can hardly wait to hear their beloved president address them. Let me also reiterate that the situation in the Gambia is completely stable and the Gambia is already open for business. The meeting is open. We thank the High Commissioner, His Excellency, Mr. Blair. Mr. President, Congratulations. the Gambia, like most Africans, well have this curious fascination with age and elders. Sometimes we even confuse them. That's why all the African footballers don't know how old they are. <laughs> but my great uncle once chastised me. He said to me, young father, you left Gambia and I'm no longer your friend. You don't ring me and you've left me. He said, in this world, there are four types of elders. It is very difficult to have friends among all four elders, but it is careless not to have friends among any of the four elders. And I said to him, so who are the elders in this world? He said, men of power are elders. He said, men of knowledge and women of knowledge are elders. He said, women of wealth are elders. And he says, me, no wealth, no power, no knowledge, but blessed by age, I am an elder. <laughs> We here in the Gambian diaspora, in this room, we are blessed. I look out and I see our elders. There are people of power. You guys know who you are. <laughs> there are people of wealth. I won't embarrass them, but I'm looking this way. <laughs> there, are there are people with knowledge. They are all over the room. And I see people who have lived in the United Kingdom for over 50 years. Many of us came here and it was through them. They showed us the ropes and showed us how to live and make successful lives. So much <laughs> now that the elders are here and gathered, it would be useful to hear from them. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs, working with us GK partners, a diaspora strategy was produced and the President launched it on January 13 at the State Indonesian Forum in Banjul. In the proceedings, we would hear maybe four of the 13, 14 pledges in the statement. So as we proceed, I would invite different people to come and read one of the statements. We would also call on different members of the community, including the media, 
to make comments and ask questions. The ministers are here. And when these statements are being made, they can respond to what they've heard in the room. And we would finish, and we would also want our Gambian musicians here to take time to play whilst you are here seated. Because it's not only a meeting, it's also a celebration as we've heard. Thank you. So can I start by inviting Mr. Melvin Robertson Roberts of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to read one of his statements in the diaspora strategy by Mr. Roberts. Gambia government, Gambia diaspora pledges. The President of the Republic of the Gambia, in the name of the government and peoples, recognize the Gambian diaspora as the eighth region of the country. Request and requires all those whom it may concern to cooperate with and assist and non-resident citizens, such as to optimize their productive contribution to society, economy, and polity for the benefit of all. We make this our solemn pledge. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Can I ask Ms. Saina Bujo to read the pledge from the diaspora? I, a Gambian in the diaspora, renew my commitment and hereby declare that I shall continue to contribute positively and productively to Gambian development and to progress, peace and prosperity as enshrined in the coat of arms. <laughs> Can I now invite Imam Taib Cham to make a comment or a question? We will be going to the audience to get comments or questions. We are asking people to kindly stick to two minutes. Our colleagues who are reading the pledges are doing it in 27 seconds. You see, I can count. People don't believe me, but I can count. Indeed, yeah? So when I invite people for two minutes, um, please, um, Imam Taib Cham. Of course, 
London is a city of diversity and city of peace and tolerance. We as a Muslim, especially in the Muslim leaders and the scholars, has been facilitated all type of activities without any restriction except you lose your track to the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. Why I mention this? We should appreciate living in the West, practicing our team accordingly, day and night, opening schools and Islamic centers without having any problem with the local authorities. I came to this country since 1994, employed by Muslim World League in Mecca. Since then, whoever know the Gambian community since past 30 years and today there's a big difference. It's more than 30 Islamic organizations operating from Birmingham, Manchester, up to Scotland, Portsmouth, to the south. Everywhere we go you will find Islamic society run by the Gambian citizen. Brothers and sisters, after welcoming our president, I like to congratulate you after myself and all the Gambian nation for the wonderful effort you have made until we start Gambia back to the Commonwealth. <laughs> Excluding Gambia from the Commonwealth has caused a lot of difficulty upon Gambians, also for the Gambians all over the world suffered because of that withdrawal. Mm. Today is a day of celebration. First, to beat you as a third president, mm -hmm. your first effort, sorry, your first office, your first visit, I mean, in London, officially, is a celebration for all of us. Before I conclude my short statement, I'd like to remind you after myself, the truth of the ladies. The Lord of Prophet says, Arahimuna Yahamu Rahman, Irhamu Manfi Abi Yahamu Manfi Sama. Those who have sympathy and kindness upon your people whom you are ruling, Allah Almighty Allah is the superior who has power, he will look after you and will guide you. I want you to continue. Continue to kind and rule just peace to unify Gambia on the shape of one nation one community, one population, and one aim will achieve our goal. Insha'Allah, wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi Thank you very much, Imam Cham. I now ask um, our Ba to make a statement or ask a question. Our Ba. <laughs> about the environment. We have seen um, all the devastating pictures about what Golden Leaf is um, doing to the Gunjur environment. Um, and we also, <laughs> also um, this is linked to the environment, but we are quite pleased to see that we've got a very good relationship.
Seine Dame, wir haben uns noch
the, DD, the DDF will expand and enhance the collective um, remittance send for community projects. Hometowns, districts, alumni, and so and sectors, sectorial, sorry, sectoral non for profit diaspora group will apply to the D, DDF to <coughs> leverage and leverage and supplement the resources they raise, raise by themselves. For entrepreneurs, DDF shall provide the core investment to stimulate and expand joint creation. Job creation. Thank you very much, Kadisan Adabo. Can I now ask Mr. Abdullah Job to make a statement or ask a question? Mr. Abdullah Job. The mic is coming on. Okay. Okay, Mr. Job. Is to show 
that doing these things they didn't mean we were looking for jobs. Some of us have to go. I, 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 I have my children here. I have over six grandchildren here. And then this place my home. I am going to retire in a minute. I'm not interested in the job. I'm interested in one thing. I'm very concerned about the future of my children, about the future of my grandchildren. I'm concerned about an issue the president referred to recently. He called it corruption. I think that's a serious matter. And I think an anti-corruption commission should be settled.
for effectiveness of this process to commence, Mr. President, because the victims are still in pain. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> the earlier this process can be fast track, and I know the Attorney General, the Minister of Justice is here, and I know we are aware that efforts are being made, but you know what? When someone is hungry, it's always difficult to tell a person to wait for the food. Yeah. So, Mr. President, we want things to happen. So the question I have, Mr. President, is similar to what Mr. Joe said. Gambia definitely needs an anti-corruption commission, Mr. President. The good work that your government is doing today may not come to the expectation of people if we don't have anti-corruption commission. The physical discipline, the economic policies that you put in place may not materialize, Mr. President, without a solid anti-corruption commission. And I have never heard this in any of your speeches. I've never heard it as a policy pronouncement. The outgoing president of Liberia, Her Excellency, Ellen Johnson Solid, in the first year of her presidency, instituted the anti-corruption commission. It is important that we have a watchdog in the Gambia. This commission is important if we are to survive as a nation. And the corruption
to dig it up. Like Professor Robert Pass predicted in his report that the Gambia, with its uh, fresh water uh, uh, supply from the Gambia, the Gambia that can produce between two to three rice harvests every year from the northern upper region of the Gambia. Now, uh, the food production is part of our main uh, you know, development with the particular civil sector that we have Now, there is one thing about the Gambia. If you deprive the Gambians of their man, <laughs> or their chair, or their chair, you are in trouble. Yes. <laughs> now, make sure that of all the development projects that you audited, food production is one of it. And also, may I just put a question there? That the Gambia must remain a secular state.
and uh, expanding, which I think is a very uh, beautiful thing. Uh, I think we've got to go beyond the traditional partners we have and the external <coughs> partners in our foreign policy in, in Asia, in Africa, in the Arab world. And that I think uh, needs uh, knowledge of the region, the culture, of the people as well. And that I think will make a lot in terms of uh, promoting a very robust and uh, foreign policy. And of course, uh, one can see as well, uh, we are actually going towards the school transitional justice. Um, and I think uh, one of the challenges uh, would be the healing. The healing. One of the things I had from our, our, our Secretary General was that we inherited a broken system. And it needs a, a lot of uh, concerted effort to really uh, rebuild the Gambia and to bring the Gambia um, outside the um, uh, stagnation we have been um, culturally, educationally, politically, and otherwise. In terms of uh, the other challenge is uh, uh, how to promote uh, social cohesion and uh, tribal harmony. It has been there, but we shouldn't take it for granted. We have seen countries like uh, Lebanon, uh, most of them are Christians and, 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 and Muslims, but they are all Arabs. But it has been going through difficulties because of uh, bad political uh, signals we send. The case of Rwanda is so far from us. So we've got to um, make effort to make sure that this peace is very entrenched and strengthened. I think uh, one of the things I want to say as a uh, sort of challenge is what I call the, the religious um, narrative discourse. I think has to be um, uh, transformed to promote uh, inclusion, to promote um, dialogue. In fact, here I'm, I'm reminded of what uh, one of the Muslim thinkers, Mahmoud um, Iqbal, is uh, an Indian philosopher and the thinker, he talked about Islamic cosmopolitanism in terms of promoting uh, conversation and dialogue. And on that note, probably I can also uh, quote Edward Said, a Christian Arab, who talked about uh, that we have clash of morals and not clash of cultures. So we've got to really look at it for granted, to try to uh, promote the peace we have in the Gambia in terms of bringing about Christian and uh, Muslim have been together. For, for years, you know, my brother is going to St. Augustine, St. Peter's, St. Joseph's. You don't ask whether it's a Christian school or a Christian school. You ask, is it a good school? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, honor, Mr. President, Honorable Ministers, you've heard a general comments from different members of the community. Now, it is my pleasure and my honor to invite the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, International Cooperation and Gambians Abroad, AMN Hussein Gabo. Of course you know Mr. Gabo as the Foreign Minister and the founder of UDP Party, but you may perhaps I um, want to remember that he is the first Gambian from the rural areas to qualify as a lawyer in Gambia and call to the bar and practice in the Supreme Court of Gambia.
definitely push its excellency the president and all cabinet ministers are present to push Gambia for the public. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of the Ghana, Mr. Damabaro. Your Excellency, the First Lady of the Gambia, Mr. Fatma Baro. My Honorable Cabinet colleagues and present. The Secretary General and Head of the Civil Service. Your Excellency, Gambia's High Commissioner to the United Kingdom. Mr. Francis Blaine, Mr. Dickens the, of the Commonwealth Secretariat, the entire Gambian delegation accompanying His Excellency the President, Gambians who have traveled from other parts of Europe, understand from France, Switzerland, they are all here. Distinguished guests here are present. The entire Gambian community in the United Kingdom, their families and friends, ladies and gentlemen. Prior to the government assuming the mantle of leadership, after 23 years of dictatorship in January 2017, we have heard that we would reverse the unpopular decision and prioritize the Gambia's reform to the Commonwealth of Nations. <laughs> that message was further echoed by His Excellency President Aramabaro to the UK Foreign Secretary, the Right Honorable Boris Johnson during his historic visit to the Gambia in February, this, in February last year. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure and joy to be in London today and to be in the midst of proud sons and daughters of our motherland, the Gambia. Your contributions over the past two decades towards restoring democracy in the Gambia did act as a catalyst in reducing the Gambia of the dictatorship. <laughs> Many of you here present today may have left the source of the Gambia for a multitude of reasons. These are not limited to the dire economic hardship faced during the 22 years of dictatorship the positive academic development and for other genuine fear of and for other the genuine fear of your lives. As you are aware, some of your family members and acquaintances became prisoners of conscience. And in some cases, due to immense risk to one's personal security, many could not return home to pay their last respects to loved ones that had passed away. That was indeed a big moment in our history. Your collective sacrifices, we are all drawn for the love of nation. Some of you have lived in the United Kingdom for decades. I'm told by some for 50 years. <laughs> As professionals and hardworking transnational citizens, contributing to the development of UK and the Gambia in equal measure. The remittances that we are sent on a monthly basis to family and friends which was instrumental in absorbing the impacts of the dismal economic malaise that had affected households from all corners of the Gambia during the previous regime. As you continue to support your families back home, I'm pleased to inform you that work has already started at the Central Bank of the Gambia to reduce the cost of remittances to an average of 3% for lower value. <laughs> we are also working to develop innovative investment structures such as diaspora bonds 
so that you have the option to channel your hard-earned finances into productive and impactful ventures in the Gambian community. We commend Professor Dibri Fall and his team on the Migration and the Sustainable Development in the Gambia MSDG project for the leadership and the technical guidance in these areas. <laughs> the government, led by Almabaro, is working tirelessly to create a conducive and supportive economic environment to attract foreign direct investment as well as diaspora direct investment. We recognize that we need to have the adequate policies and operational and operational competencies in place to ensure that this that ease of doing business in the Gambia is addressed and to diversify our economic base in order to create decent and sustainable jobs, especially for young people. Ladies and gentlemen, the Gambia had taken numerous strides to rejoin the Commonwealth. This involved a consultative and transparent process by the Commonwealth Secretariat, whose engagement with various stakeholders ranged from meetings with the government, civil society, organization, and a cross section of the Gambian society. The Gambia eventually submitted a formal application to rejoin in January 2018. We received a unanimous endorsement from the Gambia's law and for lawmaking law body, the National Assembly. Furthermore, our government is elated to highlight that as we extra entry into the Commonwealth in February, we received an equivocal support from all Commonwealth member states and the Secretariat throughout the entire process. I must confess that I was filled with great pride and joy to witness from afar the cohesion of the Gambia's flag during the will support 
the Independent Oil and Gas Commission to facilitate full registration of gas of gas for voter and oversee gas for voting in the future. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to take this opportunity to once again thank you, the diaspora community, for your exemplary leadership and the manner in which you continue to contribute positively within the wider UK society in the better scheme of things. You are all ambassadors. <laughs> May I remind you all that the positive manner in which you interrelate with communities residing far beyond the UK and other parts of the global village. The Gambian people have a good narrative to be proud of. I have come to have an ambitious national development plan 2018-2011, which we roll out in January this year. We count, we count on all Gambians the international community, multilateral partners, private sector, and particularly the diaspora community to work closely with the Gambia and achieve the goals set out in the development blueprint. We have seen over the over the past year how the, we have seen over the past year how the citizenry can now enjoy the basic and fundamental rights as enshrined within our constitution. Just barely two years ago, this was not the case. We will soon embark on a process of transitional justice to address issues of past and of, 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 of the past and pave the way forward. I am sure the Honourable Attorney General will in due course dilate on this. On behalf of His Excellency, the President of the Republic of the Gambia, distinguished residents and gentlemen, I have a similar honor to, to declare that the Gambia is open for business, and I do so also on the authority of the means of trade. We try to work hand in glove with all international partners in pursuit of mutually beneficial objectives, in pursuit of global peace and security, and affirm our commitment to the diaspora communities in the realization of our prosperity, prosperity ambition as enshrined within our national development blueprint. The commitments of our diaspora strategy are incorporated in the National Development Plan. This is a clarion call for us to put all our differences aside, focus on the many things we agree on, and work towards the common good. This is the time for efficacious implementation. This is the time for skilled operations. This is the time for action and results. I and my cabinet colleagues, led by the president, will be the first to admit to you that doing the right thing and doing the things right are fraught with difficulties. We as human beings, we make mistakes. We miss opportunities. And sometimes we even offend our citizens. When we, we, when we make human mistakes, it also be the, we will also be the first one to say, loud and clear, the Gambians, that we beg your pardon. We may have our secrets, <laughs> but one thing is certain, and that is the fact that our undeniable collective person of a new Gambia was not wasted. The journey to the cherished Prosperous Gambia is not a sprint, but an unending marathon. Let us use our enemies for that noble purpose. Let us recognize and celebrate our small victories and achievements. Let us be constant in our eternal optimism that Gambia will indeed be the land of progress, peace, and prosperity. Issues have been raised in the floor, and I feel that most of them 
c'est le tout même ministère de la Cour suprême. Mais je sais que le gouvernement, led by President Atamavaro, est responsable to the concern of the Gambian people. Mm -hmm. We have in place the National Environmental and the uh, National Environmental Protection Act. And you will have the National Environmental uh, Agency Office under the Ministry of the Environment, which is particularly concerned about the protection for our environment. And of course, we also do realize that in some cases, Situations are always exaggerated for purposes that is known to those people. We have never abdicated, and we will never abdicate our responsibility for the people of the country. It was not a local or a domestic concern, it is an international concern. And I can tell you, part of this country. For the commandment of the area was dealing with issues of environmental matters. So we will not be in that international community agreeing to protect the community and the environment, and yet in our own backyard we ignore it. I want to assure Madam that whenever there is an infraction of the law, of any type of, of any type of law, this government we ensure that those people who have been found non-compliant will be subjected to due process without interference by the executive. <laughs> In similar vein, we have a law, the fish we start, and it is a law that criminalizes illegal fishing, not only by senators, but by any person. So the concern will not be only Senegalese. Our concern will be anyone who is found violating the provisions of the fish Act by engaging in illegal fishing. And I can assure the, uh, the inquiry that whenever Coaches are caught in our territorial borders. They will be dealt with and they will be dealt with according to law. And this will be irrespective of whether they are Senegalese or whether they are Koreans or whether they are Guineans. It matters not who they are. And we want to assure you that, again, that we will not abdicate our responsibilities that way. An issue has been raised about the Turkish medical package given to the President when he was in Senegal. I want to tell you that wherever the President's staff was on an office at this, I'm always with him. Yeah. And I'm privy to whatever happens between him and any foreign government. And at the time that the President was in Senegal, he was not even sworn as President. So I cannot imagine how the Turkish government would really enter into any kind of I just want to say that you know, this again, you know, I mean, the uh, imagination that uh, people think. And let, let me tell you this thing, that when we visited Turkey with the president some months ago, the first lady, I think, uh, had some discussions with the first lady of Turkey, of Turkey so that some medical facilities can be established in the Gambia for the benefit of the children of the Gambia. Thank you. Thank you very much. Some time in your time, when the Turkish government gave the Gambian government any packages for medical treatment. Because you do have certain members of the, of the forces who, on their reciprocal, with their counterparts, do enjoy it, but it's not a local package. So I wish that we could have that uh, clear. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. will deal with the issue of the TRRC. <clears throat> but I'm not sure whether an NGO, the government, will uh, pass this responsibility to an NGO. 
after all, the JRRC has always been well, with things of the past, the wrongs of the past, so that we can have a healing process. And we will envisage that at one time, all those activities will come to an end, at least during the presidency of President Adam Obama. And in fact, we can't be succeeding government because no Gambian citizen will be subjected to treatment that will warrant them to seek redress through any victim center. That we can assure of that. Yes, I met Mr. Joe in Atlanta. Uh, no, in, in Raleigh in 2013. Yes. We all have a story to tell. I have a story to tell from 1973 yeah. when I was going to the bar. And maybe if anyone read my undelivered allocutors mm. would have seen my vision. Mm -hmm. And you know, it is that vision that made Adam Obama to join the United Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it is the realization and attainment of that vision that means on Sunday, go out on the 14th of April. Thank you. So on Sunday, so on Sunday and his group of people and his colleagues went out on the 14th of April mm -hmm. because he said we should have true, fair, and transparent elections in the country. Mm -hmm. He said there should be time limit. Yeah. The leaders of the political parties had presented a document to the German regime asking for comprehensive electoral reforms, asking for reforms of the constitution that will allow for free and fair elections and put in place a responsible government, a government that will be responsive to the people of the Gambia. And when, and when the government really ignored what the political leaders, what the party leaders asked for, so organized a group of young men and men one that there won't be time limit. That was one of the demands. That there should be no abuse of incumbency. All the things that militate against free and fair election that were embodied in that document was what Solo Mr. Joe went out to fight for. And Mr. Joe, I want to tell you that this was our position. Mm -hmm. So it's not anything new. This is what we have committed ourselves to, that there should be free, fair, and transfer elections in the Gambia, which includes pandemics. Thank you. Thank and you. That, you. Is, that, is, and, uh, that is why mm -hmm. I went to jail with my brother. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. Several people of the United Democratic Party come out about 90, that's why I'm all went to jail. Mm -hmm. In order to establish a free, fair Gambia. That will be more suspicion. So, President Adam Abaro's government, mm -hmm. because it's a vision, what we envision is why he kept the UDP, yeah. never abdicate that responsibility. That I can assure you. Thank you. But certainly, I agree that uh, people continue to say things, and uh, indeed, as I say, we all have a story to tell, and I say from 97 to what democracy now, is. Well, that's a story. But, it, but this is what we say. <laughs> And as I said, maybe if you buy the book, Adam Barrow, the president, mm -hmm. written by Mr. Mane and uh, uh, Mr. Tal, you will see the full Alokutus. Yeah. And you see what my vision is, why the struggle, the struggle that attracts the government the reasons why President Adam Barrow joined the UDP and that we will never stay away from that. We are better to the constitution of the government. Family better. Take that to us back. Aww. Thank you. Woo. Thank you. Well, just a, and a final note about the some of the issues raised on food production. Just we agree. We certainly agree that Gambia should feed itself. We should certainly be self sufficient in food. But when we talk about food in the Gambia, we just concentrate on, uh, on rice. Somebody was saying the kid, the kid, the kid. 
Je suis très bien. 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 Je
as the coalition candidate for the first political coalition, <coughs> grand coalition we saw in Gambia, and indeed elected president of the Republic of the Gambia. So it is our pleasure. <laughs> Gambia, 
for one Gambia to succeed more than myself. Yes. Naturally, I'm somebody who believes in the principle of democracy. I believe in the rule of law. I believe in defending human rights. That's why I was brave enough to appoint my Minister of Justice a human rights defender and the Chief Justice in the Kamehameha a human rights defender. Thank you. But Gambians, we are very hopeful that Gambia will succeed. Inshallah. But there is a lot of good will around the world mm. because of what we are able to achieve within the sub period. Mm. Why we achieve that? Because Gambians, we are united all over the world. And if you are united, you are strong. Let us continue with the spirit. That spirit of unity. <laughs> if Gambians support this cause and Gambians voted for me, it's a social contract. And inshallah, I will fulfill that contract. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but today this meeting, the dynamics have changed. This is not the way it is for me. We always want to feed the Gambian well, the fuller, the mandinka, the sarabu, the jola. But today the meeting is more of a style than the Gambian style. But we ask something that we circumstances are different. The most important thing is let us all be honest. Let us be united. If we are united, we are strong. Mm -hmm. I think you are ready for that. But the government of diaspora, you can be in England or in America. But if they give you a Form to feel place of birth. Thank you very much. You can live in London, you are this London if you move to Bath in our other gym. But place of birth is always in Never. We are all thinking in that direction. We all focus towards them. And believe me, other countries can help. England, America, the World Bank, the Iron. But the ultimate responsibility is the government. Fellow Gambians, it is my singular honor and privilege to engage with you. And I bring to you the warmest family greetings from our beloved country. Some of you are regular visitors to the Gambia, while others have maintained their emotional and developmental ties to our great country. I express gratitude to you for your continued and enormous contribution to national development. The diaspora contributed ideas and finances to bring about political change in our motherland and demonstrated fortitude during the transition period. Ladies and gentlemen, I have no doubt that your commitment to national development will remain unshaken, and I strongly hope that you will continue to work closely with the Polish government. 
Or enemy we have partners with experts from the diaspora and develop a program for migration and sustainable development in the Gambia. This includes research and consultation with Gambian diaspora regarding the drafting of a 10-year diaspora strategy, 2018-2027. A prioritized strategy for implementation within a three year period 2018 2021. Establish the diaspora directorate as a service delivery unit to facilitate interface between government and the diaspora. Budgeting and resource mobilization. For the directorate for the 2018-2019 fiscal years. Training senior government officials and other stakeholders on how to support the diaspora. Launching of an initiative by Central Bank of the Gambia and partners to reduce the transaction costs of remittances. Innovation of an annual stake in the nation forum. To make the declaration and start Gambian diaspora month slated for 15 December to 15 January annual. <laughs> also, we are we have been we have been encouraging Gambians entrepreneurs to invest in the country, which has resulted in the lancing of private television television stations <coughs> and radio stations. Others have engaged in economic activities, such as Gaipa Special Economic Zone Project by Mustafa Yar. I think it was in there. Fellow Gambians, my administration will continue to support viable forms of diaspora direct investment initiatives to fund specific commercial and social enterprises. We create decent jobs for our young people. I encourage the Gambians diaspora to keep a significant part of their savings in the country, thereby contributing to the national economy. <coughs> Gambia is open for business. Therefore, you are all to exploit all the opportunities. We all have stake in ensuring developmental progress in the new government. We have a national development plan and we must focus on meeting its expectation to succeed. My office is now monitoring and coordinating with the various sectors to ensure that proper systems are instituted and procedures are followed. In the new Gambia, we are determined to safeguard our freedom and democracy in a peaceful atmosphere. We must demonstrate that politics does not imply hatred, violence, or disunity. <laughs> all political engagements in the new Gambia should be within the constitutional framework and respect for the rights of all citizens to freedom of expression and association. My government is committed to political politics and diversity. The peace, security and stability of the country take precedence over individual interests. This is essential for social, economic and political reforms. The National Development Plan 2018-2021 can only be realized if we unite and work to maintain peace and stability. Those elected or appointed to public office are obliged to safeguard the human, civil and developmental rights of citizens and to provide quality services. This is an obligation which must my administration recognizes the Gambian diaspora as the eighth region of the Gambia. And I 
I'm glad that hundreds of Gambians have responded positively to the call to participate in the Gambian diaspora on 15 December to 15 January. My administration, through the new Gambian diaspora directly, an order mechanism will create the atmosphere for diaspora individuals and organizations to invest and implement their projects. We are aware of the need to protect regular young and vulnerable migrants and, when necessary, facilitate their safe and voluntary return home. I commend all Gambians in the diaspora for their commitment and support to the government and the people. In particular, we recognize the support from the director of GK Partners, the Gambian diaspora, Professor G.K. <laughs>